I know when I'm with Brie in wine country, when I'm 50, I'm not going to have any what ifs. I'm going to laugh about my failures and I'm going to toast to my successes, but at least I won't be saying what if. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. We have the Bella twins on the show today, Brie and Nikki Bella. I just love these two. So they are both entrepreneurs. They have several different businesses. They've got their reality show, Total Bellas on E. They're WWE superstars. They're, well, one's a mom and one's a mom-to-be, and they're both expecting. Nothing was off limits today with our chat. We talk about entrepreneurship, motherhood, the combo of the two, their new book, Incomparable, which just came out. And they talk about things and share stories in this book that they've never shared before. This is Brie and Nikki kind of going deep and getting into some tough experiences that they've had and what they've learned from them. In our chat, we cover time management tips and the top lessons they've learned since becoming entrepreneurs. Nikki and Brie have their wine company. They've got Birdie Bee, their lifestyle clothing company. They've also got their skincare company, a podcast, a reality TV show, and about 10 other things going on. So we dive into productivity and time management. How do they get it all done and stay in alignment was a key question I had for them. And without further ado, here are the Bella Twins. Bree and Nikki, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me, especially on book launch day. Let's hop right in. In the spirit of why not now, can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you had to ask yourself, why not now? Yeah, so this is Bree. I'm going to start because both Nicole and I, we have different ones. But my why not now would definitely be the time I wanted to sign with WWE. Um, You know, it was funny because when the opportunity came and I saw that they were on this search for women wrestlers, I was instantly like, yes, doing it, going to Diva Search, I'm becoming a pro wrestler. And I didn't realize how hard Diva Search would be and that I wasn't their look. But the bigger thing I didn't realize is how my family would take it. Because after doing Diva Search, I didn't go all the way, but I did, my sister and I both got an opportunity to fly to McDonough, Georgia to get in the ring and auditioned again as wrestlers. After we did that and we went back home, my sister and I in our heads were like, game over, we're doing this. But my family, it was crazy. They all had their opinions, very strong opinions, why they didn't want us to do it. But the opinion that mattered, like meant the most to us was my grandfather. My grandfather was so against it. He was just like, no, you guys can't be wrestlers. You're supposed to get married. You're supposed to have kids. Like, not go wrestle. And shortly after that, my grandfather passed away. And my sister and I, you know, he was like our dad. We were so close. And his death came out of nowhere. And so we, it was so weird to kind of have a passion for something and love something and want to do it. But then the one person you love the most leave you with this opinion. And 
um, it was really hard. And I didn't, Nicole and I both didn't sign right away because of that. And then at the time too, I was living with my boyfriend and we were together at this time. It had been over two years and he was kind of the same. He's like, we've invested so much time into this relationship. You're just going to pick up your stuff and go to Florida and wrestle. Like, what about me? And I had all these things like that were in my personal life going on where it kept making me feel like, I guess I shouldn't. But then there was something inside of me that said, no, you need to do it now. Like, this is your time. And I kept listening to that voice inside. And I finally was like, I said my prayers and I'm like, pop, pop, I'm sorry. I feel this. And I know from heaven, you're going to support it. And I looked at my boyfriend and I'm like, if we're meant to be, we'll get through this. But I just, I packed up the car and I drove to Florida and I started to wrestle at a developmental program called Florida, Florida championship wrestling. And then the rest is history. Like if I didn't take that leap of faith, if I didn't listen to that voice inside, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Oh, wow. And I, I can't wait to dive into that more and kind of dissect that moment when you went from idea to action and talk about that intuitive hit that you got and then how you fostered that over the years because clearly, you know, it has it has paid off. And also just the influence that we have around ourselves when when we're making these big decisions and it can it can weigh so heavy. Um, sometimes heavier than that intuitive voice. But uh, okay, so let's let's hear yours, Nikki, and then we're gonna we'll we'll chit chat about both. Okay, perfect. So and I believe this is a why not now. But for me, so Bree and I, we just, our memoir, Incomparable, just came out. And I shared two very intimate stories that had happened to me in high school that dealt with rape when I was 16 and then when I was 17. And for so long, I had held the secret in that, you know, my, my sister knew, one of my cousins knew, a few friends, and then my ex fiance and now Artem. And it's something that I've kept inside, just have held on to for over 20 years because I felt so much guilt and shame and blamed myself. And it was kind of crazy because it took me to get this incredible platform from the WWE, Total Divas, Total Bellas, where I ended up getting such an intimate connection with our fandom that we call the Bella Army. And when I started to hear all these stories of these girls or these women and just what like people had gone through and how I inspire them or motivate them to become better, I started to be like, I feel like I should share my story. And then the Me Too movement happened. And I just saw these women start talking and I kind of started to realize like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Like these women also blame themselves. They think it's their fault. They're carrying shame and guilt and it's not their fault at all. And when it really like hit me was when we were writing with our ghostwriter two and a half years ago and I was talking about these stories and I was still blaming myself. And she finally looked at me and goes, you were raped and you had nothing that was out of your control. You are not at fault for it. You did nothing wrong. And it started to help me free me of my shame and my guilt. And I've been in therapy for a long time, but it was like, finally I just got to the point, like, how hard this is going to be to share my story. I think of all those girls in high school that go through it, college, in their 20s, 30s, and beyond. And if my story can help them not carry guilt and shame and blame themselves for over 20 years like I have, then to me, that's winning. And that's why I ended up sharing my story. How powerful as well. It's as I've been listening, I've been listening to the audiobook and huffing around and it's and also watching the reviews. I mean, here it is fresh, right? Where you're day one out of the gate and your stories that you've shared, they really are transcending what, you know, everyone has kind of heard and seen, whether it be on uh Total Bellas or it's it's what, you know, we've known as far as some of the reality um and social media. And so I just, I just a hat tip to you both for going a little deeper and and uncovering some things, difficult topics, because that's, I think that you know the platform that you have, it's so powerful to hear 
your story and how we're all, you know, learning from each other. But really, like you said, Nikki, it's like I've heard before, you know, if you feel if you have a secret or shame, paint it red. (laughs) So that's kind of what you've done here with the spotlight of saying, okay, I used to feel this way. And let's let's kind of start there because I imagine the entire book was a why not now, given you did go to those depths and talked about bullying. You talked about your relationship with your father early on and and how that's also evolved. But what was that conversation like with the two of you when you decided, okay, are we really going to go there? Are we going to? And I know you you covered a little bit of this on on your TV show. But was there kind of a, a pros and cons list? Was it how do you how do you make those decisions together? You know, it, it is crazy because it is a lot of thinking. There's a lot of sleepless nights and there's there's a lot of pros and cons list you're making. And my sister and I, we were just kind of like, we have a story that we do feel like people will relate to and that will help people. But are we ready to share it? And are we ready to talk about the people we love and that we've always protected? Because no human being's perfect. And people make mistakes in life. Or there's times when I look at my parents who were kids trying to raise kids. And, you know, so you take all of that into consideration. But at the same time, Nicole and I always told ourselves that if we're going to do reality television and we're going to put our lives out there, then we have to fully be open. Like we can't pick and choose. We need to let everyone know everything because that's your duty. That should be your duty as a reality star and let people sit at home and relate and go, thank goodness I'm not alone. So that's how we also started talking about the book and being like, okay, let's, let's do this. Right. And Brie and I also, we never really wanted to tell like our full story too, because we, felt like for so long, like we would be portraying ourselves as victims and we never wanted to be portrayed that way. And then we just started to realize over time that like, no, we're we're not victims. We're actually survivors of our own story and we're heroes of our own story. And if we can do this, imagine all the people we can help that can do this, that we could teach that you don't have to be a victim and actually you should talk about it. And here are the steps and here are what what we've gone through, but look at where we're at. We didn't let it um, have us fall behind or take that bad path. We we decided that we were going to go down a good path and be good human beings and and survive. Clearly, you've done a lot of work to get to this point, even as an outsider kind of watching in, um, reconciling, like with, you know, your relationship with your father and a and that in itself, kind of being willing to share your story and lead that way, I, I look at your brand and I just think about, I've probably been following maybe for about three years or so, but familiar with with wrestling and the WWE back from when I had clients um, and the WWE was too. And I've never seen a more intense fan base, you know, coming from professional sports and working in the NBA and then lots of other leagues. I've never seen anything like WWE and even UFC. And I, yeah, so it wasn't, I I was able to go to WrestleMania in 2012 in Miami when Dwayne Johnson was a client and it was my first ever WWE experience and nothing like going to WrestleMania for your first one. But insane. And so you've carried these fans with you through these other factors of life and kind of made that leap from superstar diva persona storyline to like total reality. And it's it's been brilliant. Was there a tipping point that you realized, okay, this is it. We're not superstars anymore. We're actually transcending that in a way that now you're entrepreneurs. And I can't wait to dive into that. But was there a moment where you're like, oh, this is happening. Something something big is changing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll never forget when we started to do the spinoff of Total Bella. So Mm -hmm. at this time, we were already at the height of our career in WWE. Total Divas was a huge success. And then we got offered to do the spinoff for Total Bellas because they said people want a deeper look into our personal lives. And I remember taking that deeper look into our personal lives. You start to realize the things you really want because WWE, we're on the road every week. Um, Next thing you know, you're going 300 days a year. Like you're traveling the world. Sometimes you don't have time to stop and think about the other things you want. 
And I just remember thinking so badly, I want to be a mom. And I started to think at the point, but I'm just, everything was going so great in my career, like that I need to have that weight. And I remember just thinking like, wow, I'm starting to evolve differently. Like I'm not the girl in my early twenties who's just wrestling and loves to be wonderless, traveling the world, like no worries. Here I am now in my thirties, early thirties at the time. And I started to feel like <laughs> my husband and I laugh, but we would say this at this point. We're like, whoa, I think we're becoming adults. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it was crazy to kind of start to feel yourself evolve and grow up, I guess, a little bit and start to have different interests and think. And I just remember starting to be like, I, I probably need to kind of think about my next chapter in life because unfortunately you can't have a baby bump and do drop kicks. So at some point you do have to evolve. And so I remember that being a very profound moment for myself and really listening to myself and just kind of being like, okay, Brie, like, here we go. Like we're going to become more of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, for me, it's very similar to what Brie says, but I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. My mom was an entrepreneur and I always looked up to her and loved how she was just such a boss. I loved it. And at a very young age, and I think because, you know, when my dad had left the house at 15 and just dealing with the guy issues that I dealt with at a very young age, I never wanted to rely on a man. So it gave me such independence. And I always thought of independence was being self-made and being an entrepreneur because you never had to depend on someone. And when I started to see that happening as we were WWE superstars and then these reality stars, it was crazy how the doors were naturally starting to open. And I was like, wow, this is, this is actually really it. Like Brie and I can right now grab the bull by the horns and be who we've always wanted to be as these entrepreneurs. And then I remember when Brie spoke to me when we were on a play one time, like, Nicole, you know, we can't always throw drop kicks. Like there's going to come a point where our bodies aren't going to last. And it was crazy because that's like the moment when the flashlight went off and it was like, this is the perfect time. I think they say light bulb, Nicole. <laughs> oh, it's both. I got it. I'm going to blame that on pregnancy brain. Um, but the go. light bulb went off. <laughs> Something that created light went off in my head. And um, it was like, this is the perfect moment. This is the, this is our time to, be the bosses we've always wanted to be and take those chances of being entrepreneurs. And you have hustled. I mean, just watching. It's like you guys have totally owned it and and really you're, you've maximized this opportunity but also done it with alignment and and authenticity. And so I'd love to talk about entrepreneurship and business and then motherhood and your motherhood to be ish, I guess you would say, <laughs> Nikki. But also then the combo and like Brie, what type of advice you might be giving Nikki from here you are doing both. And as a relatively new mompreneur myself, holy buckets, that's not easy. So let's talk about business a little bit. When you I mean, in a way you've been entrepreneurs. I imagine it's it's like you said, it's in your spirit, um, with watching your mom, but but when you're you're just learning about running and owning your own business and you've got several now, what are what have been some of the biggest lessons? Gosh, for Nicole and I, I mean, I think one of the biggest lessons we learned is to take your time and have patience. Um, the one thing is, is when opportunity comes your way, it's so hard not to get excited and jump on it immediately, especially because Nicole and I, when we were young girls, we never thought this opportunity would ever exist for us. So I think sometimes we, out of habit, we kind of think to ourselves like, oh my gosh, this is the only opportunity we're going to get. we got to grab it and not let it go because we'll never get it again. So we definitely made a lot of big entrepreneur mistakes in the beginning because we went too fast. Yeah. We didn't like mm -hmm. fully put our business plan together the way we should have. We threw it together. We didn't allow ourselves to have patience and look at every I that was dotted, every T that was crossed. We, you know, we did a little stuff. We did things a little fast and financially it hurt us a little bit. And then also it caused like a bigger mess. And it's something that we learned and now we take it into everything we do now. 
But I would say Hanukkah, the, the way we moved so fast in we the did, beginning. Well, and, you know, one of the reasons why as well, and I would just love to teach people this, is when you're self-made and you hustle hard, the minute someone shows you a belief in yourself, so like, I believe in their idea, I want to invest, we just jumped right into it because we couldn't believe this one person believed in us. But we needed to believe more in ourselves, I realized, and really shopped around that idea we had to who would be the best investor. Like Mm. we should have interviewed more people or looked into more people. And I think that was our mistakes in the beginning. We were just so excited that someone wanted to actually try with us. And Bree and I are, we have strong loyalty. But when we look back at it, I always tell Bree, and we've made this mistake a few times. I go, we get way too excited when someone <laughs> wants to work with us or likes us, but we really got to shop that around because you got to believe in yourself before you want people to believe in you. And that's one thing that I think sometimes we can forget when we're starting a company. Okay. This is great. This is like getting a, um, you're like a, having a little master class right here. So entrepreneurship <laughs> lessons, take your time, pace it. Um, also needing to believe in yourself just as much it, more even than, than other people's belief in you. That's so good. As you've been building these businesses and brands and doing everything else that you're doing and having cameras following you and so on and so forth, I guess I'll throw this to you first, Brie, because you're – you have Birdie. It's not easy. I mean, we see it. If if we watch the show, we can see that the struggle is real. I, I, we all know it as moms out there too, in terms of trying to do, to do it all. But what are some of the things that, that you've learned that you've kind of calibrated over the last several years since becoming a mom to help you? I'm not even going to use the word balance because I just don't believe in it, but to help you enjoy the rhythm of life. <laughs> Yeah. You know, my biggest thing is boundaries, setting boundaries with your business partners and your colleagues um, in the beginning. So Mm. everyone understands that being a mom is the number one thing. Like everyone knows that for me, my daughter is the number one thing in my life and I'm willing to give up anything in the world for her. And my mornings are important. Like I want to be the one to make her breakfast. I want to sit there and talk to her and, and have us both pretty much help each other prep our day slow mornings are important to me and then I'll go hard. But I definitely had to set boundaries. And even with my sister, you know, who didn't understand in the beginning, um, because I knew if I set boundaries, then everyone respects them. And they do like you, you do see like, okay, like they don't bug me as much in the morning or at dinner time. they bug my sister <laughs> because I let <laughs> everyone know in the beginning how important that was to me. One thing I always told myself is like, Brie, don't feel guilty wanting to be a career woman and a mom. I feel like sometimes as women, we feel guilty that all of a sudden, you know, we're getting excited because we're going to go on a business trip and do all this and we're leaving our kids at home or all of a sudden we know we're going to dive deep into a project, which might take a little time away from our kids than, you know, usual time. And I always tell myself, like, don't feel guilty because Bertie's watching a strong woman rock the business world, you know, and she's learning from me. And I learned from my mom, my mom, you know, started her own company. When Nicole and I were 15 years old, she worked long hours, she hustled her butt off. And I think that's where Nicole and I got the drive. And so I was just telling myself like Birdie will get the drive and she'll know what it's like to be a strong, independent woman, which is what I want her to be. And so when she leaves the house, she I know like those habits are in her. So I always remind myself, boundaries and don't feel guilty. So important. So important. It's like the mom pride, right, versus the guilt. Um, As you look at, like, Nicole, for example, you – so this is – it's – it's fascinating that (laughs) that you both are so close in your pregnancies. What are you most excited about for motherhood? I'm – you know, I'm excited – for that love that every mother talks about that's just so indescribable and a love that you just can't even explain. Um, because already feeling my baby kick, it's crazy the love that I feel with that and how I crave it. I want more of it. And just already this love that I have that I can't imagine having even more love 
when this baby's born and I'm holding it. And that makes me the most excited. And to just protect this human and give this baby the best life that I can, it's scary. But for me, it's also exciting because I work, I work so hard and like, there are things I wish I had in my childhood and it helped me mold, like mold me into the person I am today. But I'm excited that my hustle will be able to give this baby a lot of the tools that I didn't have. Those are definitely the things I'm excited for. And I have to say, every mom entrepreneur that I have met, they don't take S H I T. (laughs) And I feel like that's starting. I'm starting to feel that like, Whoa, I'm like having better boundaries than I've ever had in my entire life. I don't mind telling people like, I've always been a very honest person, but like, I'm not caring at all about not that I'm trying to hurt feelings, but sometimes I'd be a little too sweet on things. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to make them upset. But I'll tell you what, when you're a mom in business, you just, you don't care. Your, your kids are first, then your business. And that's about it. And so I'm excited for that because I look at Brie and I look at other mom entrepreneurs. I'm like, you guys are so badass. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. It's so true. I think there's something that kicks in where it's like, okay, if I'm, I can't afford to be over capacity. So what's essential people, places, things, what needs to go? Like what's not going to make the cut? And it sounds ruthless, but it's essential for just living. So <laughs> I <true>. so agree. <laughs> and it sounds so mean when I, I would work with a lot of female entrepreneurs and have a program for them. And I'm like, okay, people, places, things, what can we cut? And they mm-hmm. kind of look at me like, oh, this sounds, but it's, it's when we start to go through, it's like, no, actually there probably is some dead weight in there. So do you really need it? For sure. <laughs> I feel not alone in quarantine. <laughs> there you go. I'm already cutting things left and yeah. right. And I'm like, this is giving me a whole new perspective. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So clearly you guys have the hustle factor. You always have. But then Brie, when we started off, your why not now, really it, the genesis and the epicenter was around that intuitive voice. So my question for you both is how do you know when to make things happen versus let them happen? Because this is a lifelong learning for me and I am totally getting schooled left and right. I usually in the past would just force it, just make it happen because I knew I could and it wasn't a good look. So I'm trying to learn from as many people as possible, but how do you decide? So, you know, I'm an extremely spiritual person and I, I believe that sometimes things are supposed to happen and we don't see the big picture. We always look at the small little steps or all the small little puzzle pieces to put the big picture together. But sometimes I feel like I have to let go and and trust my angels and my guides because I believe in all that and and trust the way it's supposed to be instead of me always trying to spend all this energy exhausting myself, making it happen. And every time I feel like I let go and I allow things to fall in place, it happens. And I'm like, wait, was it really that easy? Because it should have been. And then there's times where I've exhausted myself to make it happen And it fell apart or it didn't work. And so I, I, you know, and it's not everyone's spiritual. So I know sometimes it's hard for people to understand that or see that. But for myself in my life, um, that's really what's worked. And even like my sister yesterday was upset over a certain interview because it got cut short and all this stuff. And I was like, Nicole, it was meant to. Like, trust me, like it it was exactly what it was supposed to be. You got to let go because you don't want to ruin the rest of your day being upset about the first interview of the morning. (laughs) Um, I'm like, you just, you have to know, like sometimes things happen and there's a bigger picture in the end that we just don't see yet. Yeah, I I definitely agree with Brian. I mean, I think you definitely can't just expect things. It's like, for instance, if you want to be the best soccer player, you have to practice. So for anything that we strive to be, we have to practice towards that. But one thing that I have learned and where I agree with Brie is what is meant to be. Sometimes it is so easy to focus on that one door that closed on us where we don't see all the other doors on the side that have opened. And sometimes there is a reason why that door closed and all these other ones have opened, but we just got to open up our eyes and look left and right and go through those open doors. And then that door that closed sometimes comes back down the road or in the end you look back and you go, I'm so happy that didn't work out for me. So I know for me is anything 
that I want to do or be, I work hard at, but when something doesn't go through or I, or I fail at something, even though I tried so hard, I realized like this just wasn't meant for me and there's something else out there. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Are you ready for change? Or maybe you're already in a season of expansion. As we embrace this new decade, are you ready to take action on your own Why Not Now idea? Maybe that means starting the company, launching the podcast, writing the book, or doing more public speaking, injecting your why into what you are doing. At the end of the day, that is exactly what creates connection. And connections convert. My life work is to help guide women through this very stage in their life. I do this through the Renegade Brand Bootcamp. It truly is the career love of my life. The reason I love this program so much is because I'm able to create a mosaic, a collection of like-minded, like-hearted, driven women who come together to level up. They learn the renegade mentality directly from me, and I share everything I've learned over the past 20 years in business. It's equal parts education, collaboration, accountability, and community. We are accepting applications for our 2020 program, and you are welcome to go check everything out about the program at renegadebrandbootcamp.com. And as a very first step, just sign up for my five-day email series. I uncover all of the questions about the bootcamp and help you understand if it's right for you. We've had some incredible women come through the program, and you will hear from them as well. You can check out the curriculum, the structure, the vibe, and everything in between. Many years ago, I went to Mark Cuban and asked him for investment advice. I thought I was going to get some real estate or stock market type of advice. Instead, he said, invest in yourself. Invest in your own growth. Invest in yourself. Bet on yourself. This is the best ROI you will ever find. If you're at that point where you are ready to take action, head to renegadebrandbootcamp.com. It's powerful, I think, hearing this from you both because you do have that side of the spectrum where you are, you know, when to put your foot on the gas. Are there any tips and tricks you have on how to listen to that GPS, that inner compass? Yeah, you know, Nicole and I, it's crazy, but we're really big on listening to like, or just feeling that gut feeling. Like when there's something inside that tells you, okay, slam on the brakes and you just know like inside, like something doesn't feel right. You're like, I don't know. Like, I think I, I, I'm not supposed to go into this hard. And then there's times where you're so excited and it feels so right. And that's when Nicole and I know, like, let's hit the gas. Like Mm. everything's aligned. It feels way too good. Let's do it. And we're really big on that. I think our mom always told us growing up, like live with no regrets. My mom was really big with that. So Nicole and I are big big believers on just taking the leap of faith because mm-hmm. failing is okay. Cause if you don't fail means you didn't try. And if you don't try, then you're going to be 50 years old with your glass of wine and be like, what if? Yeah. And we don't <laughs> the what if? No. And you know, something else that my mom would always say was like, always like, what's your definition of success? And when you define that, like for me, true success for me is happiness. So that has always been my definition of it. So wherever, however successful I get, if happiness is at the end in the bank, then I'm happy. Like for me, it was never about money signs or how many followers or anything like that. I just know that if I'm happy, nothing can bother me. Nothing can tear me down. Whether I could forward the purse that I love in the magazine or not, or this new car, as long as I'm happy, I've realized me as a human being. And my definition of success, I felt rich no matter what. And my life coach, she always taught me, she taught me this one thing about making decisions and if things are right for you, that you you get in this meditated state and, and you sit up and you don't have your legs crossed and you ask yourself a question like, is this job right for me? And if your body sinks down, you know, it's your intuition saying, no, it's not. But if your body holds itself up high, it's your intuition saying, do it, go for it. 
Take hit, the leap of faith. Hit the gas. Hit the gas. <laughs> so those are two things that have really, really have helped me to where I know when I'm with Brie in wine country, when I'm 50, I'm not going to have any what ifs. I'm going to laugh about my failures and I'm going to toast to my successes, but at least I won't be saying what if. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that could be a, a label down the road for, yeah, you know, just, exactly. just to have a glass and shoot the shit and say, what if? So what's one lesson you each find yourself learning over and over? Just one that keeps coming back. So one, it's actually funny because I, I really felt it in quarantine and um, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> but is my values and my companies and um, always making sure my reflection is shown on what I'm doing. I think sometimes in business and, and there's etiquette, but you're always open to everyone's opinions. You want to work with people who are great in the, their field, but sometimes you forget that the number one thing is, do we all have the same values? Do we believe in the same things? And I don't mean God or Buddha, not that at all in business. Like for example, I'm someone who's very eco-friendly. I live a very green styled life. Um, I'm very passionate about the animals and the planet and anyone who doesn't have a voice. But sometimes what I started to realize, and this happens to me all the time, is that I didn't put that first when I, you know, being an entrepreneur and even, even before that. And I told my husband last week, I'm like, the one thing I live like if you walk into my house and you see my lifestyle, the one thing I truly live and breathe for some reason in business, I don't put number one or I, I always forget. And it always seems to just come back at me in a way that doesn't make me feel good. And I, I told my husband, I'm like, it, it can't be like that anymore. And so, you know, we've made Birdie B more a sustainable company and we're on our way to go even more green. I've now been working on a really great project at Nicole and Breezy trying to, um, make that more green. And so I'm bummed I didn't do this stuff in the beginning. Cause now it's going to be a little bit of a longer road, but quarantine's definitely made me be like, okay, earth warrior, let's step up. Come on. <laughs> but it, and you know, I have to say though, Brie, the one thing that is made me really proud of my sister is with her company. She's fought hard. She's let her voice be heard. She's done her research and Birdie Bee has already made drastic changes and Nicole and Breezy will be changed by September. And that's because she wouldn't stop working on it. And it made me, you know, made me really proud. And I just say where Bree says values, for me, it's balance. I, I always say I'm going to be more balanced. It's always a new year's resolution. It's always, I feel like I say it a few times a year, I'm going to change things. And I never find balance. I just am like, oh, well, there's 24 hours in the day. I'll just work them all. I'll try to find sleep at some point. And I just know with a baby on its way, I truly, for once in my life, need to find that balance because I feel like I've been talking about it for over a decade. And I just, I truly need it now in my life more than ever. So that's something that I always, I wish I had more of and I always fall back on. Mm, that's good. And like... Like Brie was saying, boundaries. I mean, boundaries and um, can be another form of that. Um, but what I love, thank you for sharing that too, both of those lessons. First of all, for people listening, entrepreneurs who are either just starting out or they're already on their way, by you sharing that, you are helping others think about this on the front end or realize you can still pivot. So like just that in itself is making an impact, right? So thank you so much. And in terms of the eco-friendly sustainability with business, but also on the balance side, and I think that's where we we learn what we need to teach oftentimes. And that kind of brings me around to my next question is, do you have mentors that you that are advising you just in life or on the business side? Yeah, so my sister and I, we we have a life coach that we talk to all the time. Because we do feel it's important, and just like therapy, any of that, you need to be able to express yourself to someone who isn't, I, and I don't want to say close to you, but like a family or anything, like someone who looks at it as I'm neutral. Just, or yeah, someone who's neutral, and it's a different perspective, but to really help you keep reminding yourself to listen to the voice inside. And with all the chaos in the world and how busy our lives can be, to not ignore that. So we definitely feel like a life coach, our life coach is like our mentor. And then when it comes to business, we definitely have a couple mentors that we always go to. 
who we can ask constant, constantly ask business questions to. And that's helped us grow as entrepreneurs. My sister and I, we never, we never graduated college. We don't have a business degree. And that's why we made a couple of the mistakes we did in the beginning. But having business mentors who've been through it, who have made mistakes and will tell you all about it, even though we've made our fair share of them too, but to have business mentors guide you definitely help. And we have a couple that are on our team that help us. And honestly, without them, it, it's really hard to grow. Right. And I think one thing that's really helped Bri and I is having these mentors, especially our life coach, is we share the same core values. And I feel like that's, you have to surround yourself with people. And she's always taught us that, that share the same values because that's when like you get how Brie feels at times. And now she's changed that. Um, and I feel like it's personal or professional life, but it makes it so much better when they share the same values. It's like how they mentor. It's like you just become inspired and they just open you up your eyes in such a different way. So I always suggest that when you have mentors, really make sure that you share, share the same values. So when you talk business or you want to move in a certain direction or have this vision, you know that they're coming from where you're coming from. And I think that's, it just makes you happier in the end with business. Such great advice and that alignment. Oh, so key. I look at, I call my mentor my friend tour because she's a good friend too. And it's until recently, it's always been men mentors just because of the industries I've been in. But now having a female mentor, which is amazing. Usually we're not talking about business, we're talking about life. And that ends up making my, helping me make my business decisions. So with, you have very full plates and you're, they're about to get, become even more full and you're juggling so many different things. What time management tips do you have? It could be the smallest little tricks or it could be something big, but bring them all. What do you, what do you have in terms of just efficiency and productivity tips? So we're very lucky because the one thing my sister and I have always been great at is being a tag team. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's what's helped us, you know, really thrive having three companies, having our brand, filming a reality show, having a podcast, a YouTube channel is we help each other with our schedule and our time. And Nicole and I are the type of girls we look at, we'll look at our week and be like, what's most important this week? Do we need to concentrate more on Birdie Bee? Does Nicole concentrate more on Birdie B this week? Brie, you take Nicole and Breezy. Nicole, you remind Brie of YouTube. Brie, you get everything together for the podcast. So we definitely were lucky because we're a tag team <laughs> and we take that into business. But also we just we're constantly looking at what needs the most nurturing. And whether it's even personal, yeah. like there's definitely been times where Nicole's needed a little more of you know, a couple of days off because it's like she's going through something and then she understands with me if I'm going through something. Um, so I have to say we, we've been really good at just constantly planning our weeks, our days. We have to write out lists and we really do concentrate on what needs the most attention in our lives at that moment. I agree. And also having employees or people that are on your team that truly do share your same vision and passion because we've had those mistakes too, but when you have people around you that have that, you you build this trust and you know that if you can't make a decision or you can't be there to move something forward and those people are that they believe in what you believe in and you know it's going to go in the right direction. Because there's nothing worse than when you have people that don't have that and next thing you know, you're like, wait, why does my company look like this? How did, how did we get here? And then you just start to fall apart and crumble. But if you truly have those people around you, even down to whatever your lowest paid employee, make sure that they share that passion, that vision. And when you're doing stuff that you're passionate about, it's crazy for me, at least like, I think maybe that's the part of my balance that's off is like, I never think of time because I love everything I do so much. Mm -hmm. that if anything, I wish we had more time in the day to get more stuff done or to be more interactive with everything. Gotcha. And when it comes to days like today where you have, I'm sure, back to back, do you try to book a little time in between to give yourselves breathers or are you pretty much back to back just from like a literal scheduling standpoint? We definitely try to give ourselves breathers. We, um, 
the one thing is, is we're definitely the girls who need to eat or we get hangry. (laughs) (laughs) So we make sure we have our coffee and our breakfast in the morning and especially being pregnant. But we definitely need time for lunch just to kind of be able to sit in a quiet place, re-energize yourself, refuel, um, get some nutrients in. And the one thing that we we truly realized in quarantine is no more walking and eating or standing and eating. Mm. Like Nicole and I were really big, like, okay, I'll just grab some food. I and mean, by the time I leave my kitchen and walk to my office, my lunch was gone. But I knew that was all I had time for. And so we definitely now know the importance of like mindful eating, as Andy from Headspace would say, like, Mm -hmm. you know, just sit and enjoy your meal and take that time to just reflect, refresh and just relax. Right. And Brina used to be the girls that go back to back. And now that we make sure that we get breaks, you're actually, you speak better, you make better decisions, you're more productive. Like, I've realized like, wow, you actually need those times to yourself to reboot. It's kind of like when your iPhone's low on a battery, you got to charge it. We're the same. We got to get ourselves plugged in, recharge, so then we could take on a whole nother nine hours of social media or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) um, So yeah, it's crazy just how much more alive it makes you and productive and just better at what you do. And how do you manage, do you make like to-do lists on paper? Do you have, do you make them on your computer on on an app or how do you manage your to-do lists with everything you have going on? Oh yeah. So Bree and I are very old school. Uh, I mean, well, Bree, you, you type out and print out, but I like to write everything down. Like I still, I have notebooks and notebooks of notes. Uh, I, I still carry my daily planner around. Like some people see my person like, you still carry a daily planner? Like, <laughs> like yes. a day timer type thing? <laughs> yeah. Like I literally have my monthly book or my year and it's little, but I have to write everything down, whether it's appointments to meetings, whatever it may be, even like errands. I do a to-do list every day and I like checking stuff off my list. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, And we have bulletin boards, so we're really big, like putting it up so you, where you could see it. Yeah. Because I need to be able to visually see it or I'll forget it. So, and that's why I tried to do it on my phone and I forgot more meetings and interviews because I just, my phone, I don't look at all the time like that. So we do, we have to do it the old school. I write it out, pin it up, yeah. get the cute little to-do list pad. I like and, it. Yeah. It's better that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same as well. And and speaking of visual, being visually kind of needing that visual, um, I was just giggling because I was thinking of the vision board that you made for Art of Nicole. <laughs> oh, so Never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite the the scene though. I mean, it was so funny, but also I think my favorite part was we're talking about your TV show, of course, your reality show. And watching Brie and Brian's facial expressions, I think, was my favorite part, though, <laughs> of like, is this Honestly. really happening? Yeah. Um, but I could totally see myself doing that, too. I think my husband was like, gosh, you're, you're laughing, but at the same time, I can see you doing that for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard, right, when you, you believe in them so much. Like, I didn't believe in him so much and and think he's so amazingly talented, I wouldn't have had the desire in the first place to do it. But I just was like, oh, my gosh, he could be all these amazing things. He just needs to see it. Yeah. And and I learned very quickly, oh, my gosh, don't ever do that again. Like, when I had to relive it last week, I was just like, (laughs) oh, gosh, this is bad. I I just couldn't even believe. I'm like, Nicole, you're 36. Like, I can't believe you made your fiancé a vision board. But, like, in the moment, (laughs) I felt like it was a really good idea until I had to watch myself do it. I was like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing. It's funny because at New Year's, I always like redo a vision board. It's like my fun thing to do for New Year's Eve um, because now that I have a kid, I don't go out. And Brian this year, I was like, okay, we're going to get magazines and we're going to make vision boards. And he was actually game, but how he could not believe, by the way, how many magazines I got. And then to look through all of them and he started to cut out and he goes, I'm sorry, but I'm already tired and this isn't fun for me. And I can't believe how many magazines you got just to cut out words and pictures. And what are you going to do with the rest? And I'm like, I know, I guess that is bad, but it was funny to see how exhausted he got just from scrolling the mags. <laughs> Adam was just like, I mean, he didn't want to do it at all, which made me 
then they're like, it's okay. I'll do it for you. So, <laughs> bad ideas. so good though. So good. Okay. So a few rapid fire questions will, will wind up here. Um, I wish we could do Bella brains. Like, gosh, that's my favorite segment of your podcast, by the way. I think so. We have to get, we've been missing Brian on it for so long. So we're trying to get him back on it. I know. I noticed that from the last one. I was like, Oh, where's, where's it going? Good to know that it's not, it's not gone. Okay. So for both of you, a little rapid fire, what keeps you up at night? Um, definitely my daughter's safety. Um, that and world problems that I can't control. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Fair yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. Pirates or ninjas? Who's tougher and why? Oh. Ooh, I I'm gonna say pirates because anyone who learns how to defend themselves on an ocean, you're tough. Because I'm terrified of the ocean. <laughs> and Nicole, I'm gonna say ninjas because how you can sneak up on someone. Without them hearing it, I think that's pretty damn impressive. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. I love it. And any favorite Instagram accounts you're following right now? Just kind of just for fun, just amusing Instagram accounts. One that I I do love at Betches. Don't you always Oh, Betches, I do laugh at a lot. But um, one that I I always love is because I'd love to see what she's doing is Becky Owens, I think her name is. And she's uh, Redoes Homes. She's like a Joanne Gaines, but um, I don't know if it's just being inside a home all the time right now, but I've been loving to see all the remodeling projects. Gosh. Very cool. Yeah. For me, gosh, who do I go? Who do I snoop on? I I have to say that when I want a good laugh, I'll go peek at Will Smith. He always (laughs) like has funny stuff going on. He does. Um, But I'm trying to think there's someone who I was just looking at that I thought was so funny. And now I'm going to draw a blank. Was it at the Brie Bella? Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that makes me laugh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome. And final question. And, and again, a huge, huge hat tip and bravo with your new book. We'll make sure that we link to it in the show notes. What advice would you give to that, that younger self? Let's say, let's say they're just getting ready to graduate from high school. So the advice I would give is to just dig deep and find all that courage and bravery and confidence you have. Because for someone like myself, it took me to almost 30 years old to find that. And I wish I just would have allowed myself to find it earlier, but I was insecure. And so I I just wish I could tell my 20 year old self, my 18 year old self, like Brie, you have, you have it in you. Just dig deep. You're brave. You're courageous, you're strong, and you have a lot of confidence. So (laughs) enjoy it now in your 20s. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And for me, I would say it would be to be fearless. You're stronger than you think and make every moment count because it does. Mm, What a way to wrap up on. Thank you both for spending this time with us today, especially on such a special day. Congratulations to you both on the book and the babies on the way. And um, we're just, I'm so grateful for you sharing your wisdom. Oh, um, thank you. And thank you for having us on. Yeah, I'm thank so you so happy much. that we finally were able to get on. You are a true inspiration, by the way. Brie and I always talk about you. Oh, you two are the You're sweetest. True, yeah, strong, badass mama. Uh, yeah. Well, likewise, likewise. I am, I'm a big fan and... Geez, it's just going to be amazing to see how your journeys continue to unfold. Um, so thank you for sharing them with us. You're doing very important work by sharing what you're learning. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. 
A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? Oh, 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 o